And in our baptism, we're also invited to live what we believe, to live it fully and to live it completely, to live it in a way that we want to deepen. You know, I said last week as we called ourselves into this new year that I really sincerely hope that in 2010, Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles, we commit ourselves to deepening our faith experience. So it's not just an experience that perhaps we, we reserve for when we're around other Christians. It's not just an experience that we, we, we reserve for when we're on our best behavior, but that we reserve this belief that we have for what we do 24-7, to deepen our own faith experience. I know that some people made New Year's resolutions to attend church more often. I know other people made New Year's resolutions to, to find out about God in 2010. And I want us as a church to head out of 2010, moving into 2011, knowing that we have deepened our experience of God, that we've deepened our experience of knowledge of God. And then in deepening that experience, we have decided this new day to begin again, to start over, to let the, the old be the old, and to let the new be the new. Let the new day reign. Because worrying about the past doesn't change anything. It really doesn't. Scripture reminds us that. Who can change their circumstances by worrying about it? We can only change our circumstances by believing that they can be different, by believing that we can be different and by starting over today. So in this new day, this free to live again moment, we're invited to, to say to ourselves this morning, I'm making a decision to live my life differently. You know, when you make the decision to live life differently, it will be different. Isn't that something amazing about human psychology? That if you, if you decide your life's gonna be negative, it's gonna be negative. If you decide your life's going to be positive and full of blessing, you'll find the blessing in almost everything. That's right. You know, even, even just stepping out into the world this morning, I had to find the blessing. You know, at, uh, it was 45 degrees. I didn't like it. <laughs> but the reality is, for my mother, back in, back in England, it's minus 4 degrees, and they're snowed in. And uh, they've not been able to get out of their house for six days. Uh, because they're completely snowed in and my mom can't get out because she's frightened of falling. And um, she said, you know, don't be surprised if you, you know, if you find me on your doorstep tomorrow morning. And I said, uh, no worries, the airports are closed. <laughs> <laughs> See, That's, that was my confession this morning. <laughs> So you find the blessing when you really believe in what you know to be true. You can find the blessing in all circumstances. So I'm inviting us this morning as we remember Jesus' baptism, as we remember his mikvah, as we remember that Jesus went into the waters and as he went down and as he removed from him anything that perhaps was, was not of God and rose again to that assurance that he was now fully sealed in God and that from that experience for us would come the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit that, that takes our humanness and allows our, our, our holy ordinary selves to be touched by the holy. And as we allow that holy to, to rise further and further within our bodies and make a conscious effort to allow that to become real, to be all it can be, that's when we become like Jesus. That's when we become like Christ. And so I invite us this morning as we remember those moments in our own history, perhaps those moments of our own baptism, perhaps those of us who were baptized as an adult rather than as a child, or, or for those of us who were confirmed if we were brought up uh, Church of England or Episcopal or Roman Catholic and you went to confirmation later on to confirm the faith that your parents made the decision for you when you were a baby. Or for Brad as a Southern Baptist, remembering himself um, growing up and becoming an adult and making that decision to follow Jesus. Or for others who perhaps uh, made a decision because they were able to come to an altar call. You know, I believe that baptism is just as valid by coming to an altar call. It's a statement of faith, of coming to the altar call. Those of you who received the church newsletter this week would have seen the title 
uh, sprinkle, oh, sprinkle immersal dunk. And uh, we found this new way in which it gets linked immediately to Facebook. And I won't tell you some of the comments that I got on Facebook uh, from that, uh, that expression. <laughs> One person said, please explain dunk. Um, I didn't respond. Um, but you know, just the, the, just the curiosity of people who are seeking this new life, this opportunity to live again. I'm going to invite you this morning. Later on in our service, we're going to be able to reaffirm our baptismal vows, to reaffirm that which we believe. And I invite you to do that this morning as an outward symbol of an inward choice. But I pray that we do choose to follow the Christ, the Jesus who was baptized 2,000 years ago to open the way for you and for me to have a life that is not only worth living, but a life that invites us to live again, to live again. God's blessing this morning, and would you pray with me? God, the truth of the matter is that all of us need a second chance every now and again. The truth of the matter is that all of us have done things that have fallen short of, of that which we believe and that which we think you expect of us. But the good news is that you give us that second chance over and over again. And in baptism, you enable us not only to affirm that life, but to live life again. So I pray, God, this morning for each and every one of us, myself included, that we may be reminded of our baptism. And that if we haven't yet been baptized, perhaps to think about how it is that we can create an outward symbol of an inward decision and that we might take this opportunity to live again this morning. Thank you that you're not a God of judgment or a God of shame or a God who wants to guilt us into believing, but the God who gives us freedom to choose you. So in this congregation, in this church, we do choose you. We choose to live by your values, not by your, the dogma that the church has established, but by the values of love and peace forgiveness, joy, freedom, life. And we get to live it in abundance. Just as we acknowledge the grace that is given to us in abundance, so life is also given. So may we choose that this morning, and in choosing that, may we live lives that are, are full of hope. Now, bless the words that come from my mouth, God. May they not return to you without inspiring us, challenging us, changing us, affirming us, blessing us. And in all of these things, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen.